Hi, I am Genevieve Holland, author of the Mama Natural Week by Week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. I am 43 years old and I am 34 weeks pregnant. Woo! And let me just tell you, after having two pregnancies in my 30s, this pregnancy is a little bit different. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Now there's a tension here because I don't want this to be a negative video. Trust me, there is plenty of stuff online warning you about the dangers of being pregnant in your 40s, about how rare it is to be pregnant in your 40s, and on and on and on. And we don't need that negative stuff, right? Right. However, I also want to be real because this has been a different experience. And I wanted to make this video in case you may be in your 40s and struggling, just so that you know you are not alone. So in this video, I'm going to share eight ways this pregnancy has been different being in my 40s, and we'll start with being more tired. Mm. Now, I know this is a universal complaint of pregnancy, right? Because it's hard work, but I do feel like something changes when you hit your 40s. Case in point, I just met this gal. She was 40 years old, pregnant, about 37 weeks, and she could not believe the difference just two years made. She said she had been exhausted in this pregnancy and just felt tired all the time. But with her daughter, who she had at 38, she felt great. Now, granted, it could be because she's got a little two-year-old to take care of, but I've seen this across the board. You know, my other girlfriend had three pregnancies, her last one in her 40s. She said it was day and night how much more tired she was when she got into her 40th year and she was pregnant. Even Joanna Gaines, who gave birth to her fifth child when she was 40, said that that pregnancy really forced her to stop, slow down, and rest. She was just more tired, and I can completely concur. With my first two pregnancies, sure, I was tired my first trimester. I took naps, I went to bed early, but after that, I felt normal. I did all the things and was good to go. This time around, forget about it. I'm well into my third trimester. I could still take a couple cat naps. Um, I expel all my energy during the day to be with my kids and blah, 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 but as soon as they go to bed, I am done. Move over, Sean Combs, because Puff Mama's in the house. Let me just say, I feel puffier and more swollen in this pregnancy than I ever did with my other two. Uh, now, some of this could be due to the fact that I'm not exercising as much, because that can really help. The other thing that really can help is increasing your protein. Um, there's something called the Brewer's Diet, and he was a doctor who worked with lots of women, and he recommended 80 to 100, even up to 120 grams of protein a day to help reduce some of the swelling. Well, I'm not even close to that. Um, so I have not been craving the protein like I have in my previous pregnancies. So I've been feeling it, you know, I just feel like I'm retaining fluids more and everything kind of just seems accelerated. Like I'm 34 weeks, I'm convinced this baby is 14 pounds, fully engaged, and I could give birth like right now. I'm feeling hot, hot, hot. Okay, similar to the swelling, I am so hot this pregnancy and they're probably actually connected. Now keep in mind, I live in Florida now. I lived in Illinois with my other pregnancies. So that can be a big part of this. However, all summer I was in cool Northern Midwest uh, and I still felt hot. I never sleep with covers. I want the air conditioning on all the time. I like cool showers. I have hot flashes, like I am just hot. So I don't know if this is a hormonal thing, an age thing, like a Florida thing, but. Okay, I know a lot of pregnant women love the pillows. They got the seed pillow, the you pillow, the body pillow. You know, some people love pillows. They don't even have to be pregnant. Like my husband seriously has like a pillow fortress around himself when he sleeps. Me, not so much. I like one pillow for my head and that's it. However, with this pregnancy, I would say around early second trimester, I started noticing, you know, some pelvic pain, you know, just tenderness, maybe some stiffness. And so it dawned on me, like maybe I need to like have more support when I sleep. So I've been putting a pillow in between my legs and sure enough, takes away any kind of sensitivity or discomfort. But again, this is something that's different. My other two pregnancies, I slept with one pillow on the head, nothing else. This time around, mama needs a little more support. Now this one could be due to the fact that I had some previous losses, okay? But with my first two pregnancies, I didn't think twice when I did my urine every time I'd visit the midwife or got the blood pressure or the gestational diabetes test or this or that. It was like I just assumed everything was gonna be okay, I'd be in the clear, it'd be positive or good or whatever. This time around, I'm more concerned. I'm a little bit more on edge. You know, it's, it's subtle. It's not like I'm living in fear, um, but I'm more aware and I wanna know the results and I wanna make sure everything's okay. And 
The good news is all the tests that have come back have been good, positive, negative, whatever they're supposed to be. So we're all good, which I'm super grateful for. And keep in mind, I'm with a midwife who is pretty low intervention, so we're not doing a ton of tests. But uh, yeah, I just noticed overall, a little more aware, a little bit more tuned in to those types of numbers. Super related to my previous point, I just feel like through this pregnancy, I've been mentally psyching myself out a little bit on certain issues. Case in point, where to give birth, okay? Where I live in Florida, there are no birthing centers, so that is not an option. So I either got the hospital birth or a home birth with a midwife. And both Michael and I were kind of like, ooh, can we give birth at home? I don't know, we were like super geriatric and it's this high, high risk and blah, blah, blah. And so I prayed a lot about it. I talked to lots of different people, but it really wasn't until I went back to Chicago and saw my old midwives who were pretty conservative and pretty conventional, so to speak. And I got their opinion. And my, one of my dear friends, who's one of the midwives, was like, of course you're a great candidate for a home birth. She's like, you're fantastic. She's like, first of all, age has nothing to do with it. Like if this has been a low risk, you've had no complications, like you're a great candidate, especially because with your last pregnancy and delivery, you almost gave birth in the car. I think it'd actually be safer for you to give birth at home. So hearing those words from her, it was literally like these shackles just fell off of me and I just felt so free and like, why am I carrying this around? Like really, it isn't that much different being pregnant and giving birth in your 40s. Why are we making this video? In my first two pregnancies, I thought I could do it all. I was superwoman, I managed everything, and I really didn't take or accept a lot of help. This time around, I'm like, bring it on. And God bless so many of my friends and family. They have been so helpful during this pregnancy. So when it comes to maternity clothes, I think I bought like two pairs of shorts. Um, the whole, you know, the, all the rest of my wardrobe has been donated, hand-me-downs, which is great. Great for the environment, great for the pocketbook. Um, even the baby's onesies and little clothes, I've not bought one thing for this baby yet. I'm sure I will, but at this point, I've gotten hand-me-downs, so it's been great. And it's also been really good for my kids because they're helping more around the house, they're doing chores, Michael's pitching in like he always does. Um, so, like the cliche says, it takes a village. Each pregnancy journey has been such a tremendous gift. Don't get me wrong, I was in awe and so ecstatic when I was pregnant with Griffin and Paloma. But this is different, I think, because it took a little bit more work to get here, because it has been harder, because I have had to endure some losses. I am just so grateful each and every day. And I just keep it really simple. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I feel this little baby move or kick, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And just getting through the day and keeping my temper under wraps and like just you know, just simple things. I'm just so grateful for it, you know? And I've also just been grateful to my own body. I'm like, thank you body for, you know, doing this. I know it's not easy, but you're doing it. And of course, just so grateful to God. I feel like I'm just a vessel. So there's something that's really sweet about being in your forties and being pregnant because you realize, you know, this is kind of the closing chapter. You realize that like, this is completion, you know? And that this is a gift that you could experience this one, one more time. More time. So there you have it, eight ways that this pregnancy is different than my previous pregnancies. I hope if you're in your 40s that it's encouraged you, maybe it's um, helped you not feel alone, but uh, I wanted just to keep it real and share with you my journey. I love you all so much and we'll catch you next time.